Before I get into the video, I just want to say that I have every faith in what Arcadia is doing with this game, and I sincerely, I genuinely hope that one day this game will stand out as one of the best VR horror game experiences of all time. Hands down. But having said that, we've got a long way to go. When Hinge first dropped on my phone's recommended page, it looked really good. Just really good. It was creepy, it was disgusting, it was, it was everything I wanted in a horror game and more but it was too ambitious. Fast forward to its release date and it immediately received a ton of negative reviews because it was simply unplayable. Unless you owned a quantum computer from the year 2051, you were not gonna be able to play this game. And for those that did, the game was confusing, it lacked direction and well, people were scared, so I guess that's a good thing, but for all the wrong reasons. Props to Arcadia though, they never gave up and three big performance patches later, I was ready to give it another go. Finally, let us begin. And hey, it worked and ran well. The game is now playable. Better still, the world was littered with prompts to help me progress through the game and kind of figure out where everything was and what direction I should head it. Wow, you know, if ever there was a good time to smoke, VR sounds like the place to do it. You need to find a lighter. Hey, look at that. They've added a glow to everything. I can find it super easy. Admittedly, some were definitely more useful than others. To open the door, pull the handle down. But their presence was certainly welcomed and it definitely made me feel, uh, feel a bit more a part of the world and it gave me a bit more of a bearing and where I was going and it was just genuinely a much better experience. Being able to finally experience the game myself, I, I honestly still don't know what to think, but uh, one thing's definitely for sure and that's that the game has personality. Certain things like tapping windows, <gasps> it's just the window, that's that's the little tension to detail that you've got to love. You hear that? Dun, 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 dun. Or using the tuning fork against your hand. It really helped to make you feel a part of the world. It was, it was really good at immersing the player. There's a creepy artist whose job is to give you hints in, I swear, the scariest way possible, every time. Ooh! Door to what? Not quite sure yet. What was that noise? Oh! Boy! Oh my god, what the hell is that? And the game has some of the best cutscenes I have ever seen in a VR game. Uh, thank you, miss. You're most kind, but I'm afraid I... Problem? Ooh! No, it's alright, Mr... How can I address you, sir? Cooper. Mr. Cooper was looking for a restroom and got lost. I see. Your documents and invitation, please, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I heard you got a little paradise for them money bags here, but imagine an invitation check to get to the lavatory. Your documents and invitation, please, sir. What we call the cops. Okay, okay. Here, that's your ticket. Want a lottery, sir? Yeah, stroke of luck. What the hell, Brooks? You've got an intruder. Find Griffith ASAP. Which one's vacant at the moment? Uh, the 14, I think. You're dead, motherfuckers. Steven, come here! We've got a problem! But everything else just seems determined to make the game as awkward as possible to play. The game has obviously taken a hit to the visuals in order to make it playable, but now they seem to be working against it. It's incredibly dark. I will say... It's really dark. Like... Really dark. It relies heavily on using volumetric lighting. The volumetric light is really important. I mean, like, turn it on. Really good. Turn it off. Not so good. Yeah, look, like under the floorboards there, the volumetric lighting makes all the difference. And it feels like I need a pair of glasses to be able to focus on anything that's more than two feet in front of me. I'm going to attempt to clean my lenses. I don't know if it's the volumetric lighting or if my headset is genuinely foggy. The answer is no, it is just genuinely foggy. So the anti-aliasing, boom, it makes it so blurry. Like it's clear and crisp, blurry. Not to mention the font on the documents, I swear, like it must have been designed for the sole purpose of making it hard to read, it's, it's bonkers. Pickman lives here, he's an artist. <laughs> what is this text? The enemies are certainly creepy. Whoa, it's the orchestra of death. That's amazing. 
What is that? A bowl of fruit? Are you also gonna come and get me? Yep. I friggin' knew it. It follows a similar style to Dread Halls, where you will randomly encounter one out of all of the possible enemies at any one time, and you'll kind of bump through them as you as you make your way throughout the base. Why is that statue moved? I got a tuning fork. I'm afraid to use it. I've, I've got to do it. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't resonate here. But they can kill you so fast that you won't even be able to register what's happening half the time. Hey, the banana came! Whoa, 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 what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you? That was death. That's what death feels like in this game. And when you do die, it puts you right back at the beginning again, having learned literally nothing from your previous life. Oh, it's the symphony of death. It's the symphony of death. Oh my god. There is a tuning fork here somewhere. Ouch. Ouchy, ouch, ouch. And no. So. Now I'll admit, I did have a ton of fun interacting with the many flawed collisions that the game has. Glasses, I spy a pair of glasses. Is it gonna make everything even worse? Just, I don't need that, I want I want the glasses. Should we take a teapot this time? Oh, never, no, no we won't. We'll take a cup. Ooh. Cheers. <gasps> Hat. Please, 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 please. <sighs> Nothing. Oh, boy. <laughs> but after a while, I just wanted to pick up a lamp like a normal person would. I'm not sure what the anchor point is for this, but like my hand, like this is me pretending to hold a lantern right now, and it should it should be down here. If I flop my hand, then it works. But who holds a lantern like this? Or open a door like a human being? No, no, no. If we want to stop the stalkers, we need the doors to close. That's one, and two, there's one, and here's the second one, that's it, you want to grab it, grab it with your hand, and then pull it close, no, nothing, absolutely nothing. In the end, my run came to an end when A, my auto height broke, and I became like a huge giant, fee fi huge man, I'm in the ceiling, it's a bit weird. And B, I carried a keycard into a cutscene which then removed it from the real world so that when I went back, I the, the, the keycard was literally just deleted from the game. So what happened to the keycard? So yeah, this video is basically my way of saying that is the game worthy of your time right now? Probably not. But is it worthy of your investment? Absolutely yes. Like, I hope that you can see what they are trying to do with this game, what they're trying to build. It's got the atmosphere, it's got the looks, maybe not necessarily the visual polish, but it's definitely got the looks. And the story is certainly tight as well. So I think just with a bit of love, a bit of support from the community and a bit of time, then I reckon this could turn into a really fantastic game. So I hope that the next time we see this game on the channel that I have nothing but good things to say. And if you enjoyed this style of content, I thought I'd try to do something a bit shorter and a bit sweeter with this one. So please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do more of this style. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one.